Hi, my name is Jane Josem. I'm the curator and head of collections at the Jewish Holocaust Centre in Melbourne, Australia. And in this Curator Corner series, we've been looking at interesting items that are hidden away in our archives. And today, what I'd like to look at is a series of very special wood engravings that were created immediately after the war by a Holocaust survivor named Walter Preiser. Let me just get one out carefully. So this is one of um, 12 images in total that we have here at the centre. And they graphically depict each of them horrific scenes that Walter himself witnessed during his years in camps. Now what's extraordinary about Walter is that he spent the entire war from 1939 to 1945 imprisoned in camps. That's six years. So what's really remarkable about Walter Preiser is how did, just how did he survive? Walter was born in 1899 in Posen, now Poznan, in Germany, the only child of an assimilated Jewish family. He studied art in Munich and then moved to Berlin where he mixed in artistic circles and worked as a graphic artist. His beautiful woodcuts illustrated numerous books, including Hans Christian Andersen's The Nightingale. He enjoyed a bohemian lifestyle in Berlin. His downfall came in 1938 when he was denounced for the crime of having sexual relations with a non-Jewish woman. He was tried and sent to prison. He remained incarcerated for the duration of war. In prison and later in the camps, including Sachsenhausen, Grossrosen and Auschwitz, he survived because he ingratiated himself to the wardens by making portraits for them, thereby earning privileges. Price's wood engravings depict both tor the torture he experienced and the degradation that he witnessed. For instance, when Walter first arrived in Sachsenhausen, he was forced to crawl across the square while being kicked. It was freezing and the prisoners were starved and brutalised by the Nazis as a sport. He says, by this time I'd become a living skeleton. He was once accused of trying to steal socks and was punished with half an hour of hanging on a pole by his arms and being made to stand for two weeks at the entrance gate. In many of the camps, the block leaders or capos were men with criminal records who brutalised the other prisoners. But Pricer also experienced a fair amount of luck, particularly when a senior officer discovered his artistic talent. For instance, in Gross Rosen, he was given a studio and materials and could walk freely around the camp. What a stroke of luck after the back-breaking quarry work he'd been doing. In September 1942, Walter was sent to Auschwitz, where he had a new prisoner number tattooed, 68246. He was sent to Buna Monowitz, an IG Farben factory. His first job was to make signs and paint, but soon was asked to work for the political department, the camp judiciary, as they needed someone to do sketches of prisoner escapes and attempted escapes. He was liked by his boss, so he enjoyed peri periods of relative freedom in the camp. On the 18th of January 1945, Walter, along with 10,000 other prisoners, were forced on a death march. 13 days, walking through the snow, with barely any food and water. They reached a camp called Termalin in the Hartz Mountains, those that survived, and they were forced to build a tunnel through sandstone rock. Luckily for Walter, he was recognised by an officer and instead of doing that work, was invited to paint a mural in their dining room. Another stroke of luck for Walter Preiser. On the 2nd of May 1945, they began marching to Neustadt on Lübeck Bay and the prisoners were forced onto overcrowded ships. Walter boarded the Athens. Suddenly they heard explosions. The Allies had bombed the ships, mistakenly believing they were loaded with German SS trying to escape. The Athens was not hit, so it returned to shore and finally the prisoners were free. Thousands of Jews were murdered, but Walter was free. He'd been incarcerated at that point for six and a half years. Following his liberation, Pricer worked in a displaced persons camp in Neustadt Holstein. There he taught art and design to other survivors, most of whom had missed out on educational opportunities. While there, he created this most interesting series of wood engravings, 
depicting horrific scenes he'd witnessed in his years of incarceration. So the two things that stand out for us about Walter Prizer are firstly how his artistic talent enabled him to survive the Holocaust. And secondly, when he was in Auschwitz, he used his privileged position to protect and ultimately save other Jewish prisoners, including one Joseph Spring, who now volunteers here at the Jewish Holocaust Center. So let's hear from Joseph and what he remembers about his encounter with Walter Prizer in Auschwitz. I arrived in Auschwitz on the 17th of December, 1943. Following morning, we got up and it was a beautiful day. And we were marched to the Appellplatz. Three tables were put up. The idea was to get the various details of where people came from, etc., etc. And then eventually after that, we got a number tattooed. However, on one of the tables was my savior, Walter Paiser. And he says, she, where do you come from? He says, I come from Berlin. In a French um, transport? And how old are you? S 16 still at that time. And so he says, L listen, he says, when I've finished here, the blocks have numbers. He told me what to do. When I finished here, go and see me so where in the block number. I think it was block number four. He was the Schreiber, the uh, clerk of the political department. He was very powerful because of that, because access to the ear of the Gestapo. So things could, they couldn't just push him around. So I was doubly lucky to be helped by Walter Paiser. And Paiser said to me, the only way you'll survive is if you have a trade. So because he was in a good position to uh, access anyone he wished, he called a fellow called Norbert Wollheim. He was working for the factory as a welder. You had to have connections to get people out of the uh, the, out of the shit, basically, when your number is taken and you're destined to go to Birkenau. He got a few friends out, out this way. He realized that people were sent to concentration camps for a reason, either political or otherwise, but those people who were sent because they were Jews had actually done nothing wrong. In Australia, uh, Walter Paiser survived um, as, a, as a sign writer. That was his main income. But he also made money because um, Australia is a little bit uh, horse race man, and uh, those uh, horse owners who won races liked their horses to be painted. So he did that. He's a very, he, Paiser loved horses uh, already in Germany. So horses, he, he also sculpted a lot. And I have quite a number of sculptures of his and of horses and young ladies. He just loved horses and young ladies and that was his life. Didn't have children, he called me his uh, camp son. He, he died. He died in 1980, uh, and he was, uh, I think, 81 by that time. He lived for his art: horses, women, and art. So this is what's interesting about Walter Preiser. During the war, he made nice pictures for the Nazis in order to survive. But having survived. He was able to use his artistic talent as a testament to the brutality that he witnessed himself with his own eyes. And we're very grateful to have this collection here at the Jewish Holocaust Centre in Melbourne.